Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for giving me this opportunity to exalt and praise your name. Help us to be willing to be used. Thank you for exercising my faith muscle. In Jesus' name, amen. O oh Lord, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven and in earth that can do according to thy works and according to thy might. Deuteronomy 3, 24. My testimony begins my sophomore year in college. I began losing my hearing in my right ear. Like you go up to a, driving up to a high place and you swallow and you clear your hearing again. That's the way it felt. You can get used to things pretty fast and school kept me so busy. I decided to take care of this temporary setback later. The same year I graduated, we got married. One month, oops, it didn't work. I'm sorry. Oh, there it goes. One month after Brian and I were married, we decided that I should go and get a checkup to see why my full hearing hadn't come back. I had exams, a hearing test, and finally a CAT scan, where I found out I was allergic to the CAT scan dye. I had just eaten a blueberry yogurt, and I told the attendant that I felt like I was going to be sick, 
which was new for me because whatever goes down stays down. He brought a container just in time. Then my breathing got shallow and I, could, I couldn't take deep breaths and I felt like someone had placed something heavy on my chest. I told the attendant what was happening and his face told me I was gonna die. <laughs> he called the doctors to come immediately and they were running around and one put medication in my IV. One of the doctors kept talking to me and waited around until I was breathing normal again. I was told I was allergic to the dye and not to forget the medication used. Well, the result of the CAT scan was, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor, an acoustic neuroma on the brain stem, the size of a peanut. The brain stem is beneath the cerebrum, in front of the cerebellum, it connects the brain to the spinal cord. The cerebellum and brain stem functions. The cerebellum is in the back of the brain below the cerebrum. It's a lot smaller than the cerebrum and only one eighth of its size, but an important part of the brain. It controls your balance, movement and coordination the brain stem is taxed with a duty of supervising important survival tasks, such as blood pressure, breathing, digestion, swallowing, center of alert alertness, circulation, uh, circulating blood and heartbeat, <coughs> excuse me. It connects the brain, no, it connects the rest of the brain to the spinal cord. The brain stem organizes reflexes and coordinates the fine movements of the face and limbs. It is composed of midbrain, pones, and medulla. It sorts through millions of messages that the brain and the rest of the body send back and forth. I was told the tumor must be removed now before it gets any bigger and it can't be removed. I was devastated. Surgery? Me, I was never sick or in the hospital. I asked the doctor, how do you get a tumor? Where do tumors come from? The doctor called it bad luck. At this time, I had an aunt who was learning about holistic medicine and natural remedies. She sent me to a health institute for two weeks to learn about another way of life. I was a vegetarian from a child, so I thought I was very healthy. This was my first introduction to real health. I learned here I was anemic and had been for a long time. They taught us the foods that give strength and health and foods to avoid. This was all new. My body loved it, but not my taste buds so much. Brian and I were living in Boston at that time. The Health Institute building was an old mansion with wide staircases. The stairs went to the fourth floor and I stayed on the third. I remember waking up in the morning and for the first time, I didn't feel like going back to sleep. I had so much energy. One day I was on the first floor and began running up the four flights with ease before I realized I passed my floor. My body had been starving and needed live food and a cleanse. Just think I thought I was healthy. For those two weeks, when I removed a lot of things out of my diet and added new things like sprouts, green drinks, raw foods, wheatgrass, etc., I felt alive for the first time. I met people there with a lot of diseases who were being healed the natural way and it was working. I met one guy and he was telling me he loved fried chicken and he had a cancerous tumor on his neck. And whenever he ate his fried chicken, it would grow his tumor to the point where it was, all, it was out to his shoulder. But when he would 
go back to eating the way he was taught, he watched it shrink. Well, my faith in the natural way and trust in God with my life wasn't strong enough. The surgery date was set Monday, September 19, 1984. We were informed of the possible risk with this type of surgery. Some were the injury to the cerebellum, which connects to the brainstem, to the spinal cord, partial or total paralysis, loss of control on the right side if a wrong nerve was touched, facial weaknesses on right side for at least six months, hearing loss, what remained, headache, imbalance and dizziness, brain damage, stroke, 50-50 chance of death. There were two surgical procedure options. Option number one, through the eardrum by way of the back of the ear, which results in complete hearing loss. And with this type of tumor, hearing loss soon anyway. Option number two, move the brain over, more direct, more risk factors. We chose option number one. I wanted them to leave my brain alone. I prayed that God would take the fear of surgery and worry away from me. Just control the doctor's hands and let me relax in his hands. God sent me songs to let me know that he was alive and it was in control. Like, don't wait till the battle's over, shout now. You know in the end you're gonna win. Everything I was reading for about a year was on faith. Just trust God. He gave me peace. I didn't worry about the outcome. I knew he was in control. Isaiah 26, th three through four says, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. So the doctors were prayed with before the surgery, asking God to take complete control and to be in the doctor's hands. 11 hours later, the surgery was over. They didn't get the entire tumor because of the length of surgery time. Plus I was losing too much blood. They would have to go back in. The doctor prepared my family to expect facial paralysis and then he would have to determine the extent. He said sometimes it doesn't remain permanently. While I was coming out of the anesthesia, the doctor woke me and asked me to smile, checking the facial paralysis. I heard lots of praise to God before I went back to sleep. God was given the glory. I had given the doctor a full smile. God showed his power. The doctor told my family, he does his surgery all the time. The paralysis is always a side effect. The length of time for the paralysis is what varies. We had prayed with the doctor and God guided his hand. None of the risks happened except the loss of the remaining hearing in my right ear. So that was a witness for God's power also. I learned I was in God's hand. He was in control of my life if I surrendered that control. He answered above my requests. I went into the hospital on Monday. I wanted to go home the next day. The doctor staff told me I could go home when I could eat and hold it down. I had no appetite for days, even though I was trying. I stayed in the hospital for four days and was in church that Sabbath. I'm a person who doesn't normally take any medication, but I had never had surgery before. I received Tylenol with codeine for pain. I took one and hallucinated and decided no more. I just went to bed and rested whenever there was pain. I was doing too much. I didn't need any medication. God reminded us to do what I had learned at the Health Institute. And I was up and about and recovered 
without medication very quickly. God showed me through the doctor's response and my recovery, his power. I thank God for the trial because for the first time, I saw I could trust him in every avenue of my life. And second, I was introduced to a better way of living and eating. I had to continue to learn how to eat healthy because I felt so much better. Even though removing some of the foods were hard, I continued to follow his leading and prayed not to go back. He led me to a few Bible verses that encouraged to continue learning. Isaiah 58, eight, then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thine health shall spring forth speedily. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Second Chronicles 7, 5. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Hebrew 10, 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. James 2, 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? James 4, 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. I get excited when I hear something that God is giving us to better us because I didn't understand then what went wrong, where the tumors come from. I didn't know how to help prevent it again. I prayed and God told me to eliminate things from my diet and obey and he will do the rest. I was learning the old saying was true, you are what you eat. If we ask God, he will lead us where he wants us to be. I didn't want another surgery. I prayed for healing the first time and again this time. The answer to my prayer for healing the tumor was no. So we scheduled the next and last surgery for the next year, Monday. April 22, 1985. The surgical procedure option two was used this time because they couldn't go through the same surgical spot. Now the risk would be far greater. The ratio of death would be higher than 50-50. At the, at the second surgery, I was told I was lucky the first time. Be prepared for more risk this time. We asked God to control the surgery, also, this surgery also with the doctors. God blessed again, praise God. Even though the risks were greater this time, I came through this one also with God's help. They went through my skull, moved my brain to get the remaining tumor. Recovering from this surgery took a little longer, but no facial weakness. I did have to learn to walk again and was in the hospital for a week. I would take about five to 10 steps and be totally exhausted and unbalanced. This time, two weeks after surgery, I was in the hospital. I mean, I was in church. <laughs> I needed no medication after this surgery either when I got home. I was told this time, no TV, reading, nothing using my eyes. God, God brought me through totally victorious. I received none of the risks that went with these types of surgery. Both times our family prayed with the doctors, both times God guided their hands. The doctor asked me to get at least a yearly CAT scan, but I was so allergic and all over sick from the dye and the medication they had to give me that after three times of being deathly ill and they saw nothing on the CAT scan, I didn't have any more, but some tumor remained. In January, 2011, 26 years later, Brian and I woke up each morning to alarm 
of these scripture songs that wasn't an accident. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I'll help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. In February 2011, I began having blurred double vision first. Up to this point, I had 2020. Then vertical, swallowing issues, facial numbness. My speech was hard. It was very hard for me to form words. After many doctor's appointments, I was told on March 24, 2011, seven weeks after symptoms began, that the tumor was back and had been growing for 26 years. This time it had a cyst around it. It was in the same place and was four centimeters, two inches. The neurologist wanted me to schedule surgery with a specialist immediately. I was told this one was the largest size. The cyst around the tumor caused the tumor to be so large. Here's a sample of an MRI image. It's not mine. On the left-hand side is a normal brain. On the top of the right-hand side is a brain with a tumor. The ones under it, it's a tumor from 2007 where someone had a tumor behind their eye. In 2014, it showed how it grew and started moving things in the brain on the right, on the, actually it's the left hand side. An acoustic remote, uh, neuroma, it starts on the swelling of the eighth nerve just under your facial nerve. And that's on the right hand side. If you count three up, that's where it is right there. The brain stem has three primary pots. And we discussed what the brain stem's functions were before, but this is just a, a abbreviated version. Medul the medulla regulates breathing, swallowing, blood pressure, and heart rate. The pons links the cere cerebellum to the cerebrum, connects to the brain stem to the spinal cord, and it's responsible for balance and coordination. The midbrain helps control vision and hearing. My first thoughts was this has to be shrunk so these symptoms will go away. I remembered all the risks from the surgeries before and I didn't want to go that way again. And I was much older. <clears throat> so I decided to try God's way this time. God's side effects, total trust, better prayer life, closer walk with him, his will, a way of life, the eight doctors. This time I wanted to help not hinder the healing process understanding better the power of God, his health message and natural remedies or herbs. Psalms 32, eight, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine own eye. Psalm 62, five through eight, my soul, wait thou only upon God for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and salvation. He is my defense. I will not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for, for us, Selah. So I called a medical missionary friend and asked for help with a brain tumor program. The next day I was kindly rebu rebuked by an elder that said something was wrong with my actions. I didn't go to God first following the Bible directions of James 5, 14 and 15. I prayed quietly for forgiveness and more faith. Friday, March 26, I was prayed over and anointed. 
God began to show me he wants me to come higher. Example, take his hand and never let go. No matter where he goes, I'm to go with him. Trust him first in all things and grow more faith. The health program started April 24th. The curse does not come causeless. I thank God for all the symptoms that caused me to ascertain the cause and discover the tumor was still there. I had lived in his hands for 26 years with the tumor. He was now ready to bring it to my attention. I learned during this time, the reason for my tumor was my bad eating habits plus. A healthy lifestyle consists of more than being a lacto-vegetarian. Here are some encouraging verses I was led to. And I put my situation in 2 Chronicles 20, 12 through 22. For we have no might against this great tumor that cometh against us. Neither do we, neither know what, neither know we what to do, but our eyes upon you. Thus saith the Lord unto me, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great tumor, for the battle is not yours, but God's. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. Fear not, be, nor be dismayed. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments. Psalms 50, 15, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Psalms 37, 5, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall direct thy path. My prayer was a removal of the tumor, but if his work wasn't complete in me yet, his will and time, but please remove the symptoms so I can live a normal home life, driving, working, etc. Five months later, God took away the symptoms. In August, 2011, I was in a camp meeting group exercise class and was bringing my knee up to my hand, standing on one foot and holding for a count. When God showed me, my prayer was being answered. He was slowly taking away the symptoms. No more dizziness, double vision. I was driving again, swallowing almost normal. No major facial numbness. My right arm, my right hand wasn't dropping things anymore. No more all over sick feeling. I could run. No more sleeping issues. I was overwhelmed with how God took time to answer my prayers. Thank you to God. I thanked God with a few people one-on-one, -on -one, my way of praising him. But God showed me that wasn't enough for this situation. I gave my first public testimony about the tumor and how he had answered my prayer again. God wanted me to tell everyone and not to be silent how he is blessing me and the power he has for each of us who call upon his name. Here are three reasons why it wasn't enough. From Desire of Ages, the chapter, The Touch of Faith, we're going to take a few quotes from these pages. And number one, Looking toward the woman, Jesus insisted on knowing who had touched him. Finding concealment vain, she came forward trembling and cast herself at his feet. With grateful tears, she told the story of her suffering and how she had found relief. Jesus said, Jesus gently said, daughter, be of good courage, thy faith have made the whole go in peace. He gave no opportunity for superstition 
to claim healing virtue for the mere act of touching his garment. It was not through the outward contact with him, but through the faith which took hold of his divine power that the cure was wrought. Number two, after healing the woman, Jesus desired her to acknowledge the blessing she had received. The gifts which the gospel offers are not to be secured by stealth or enjoyed in secret. So the Lord called upon her or us for confession of his goodness. Ye are my witness, said the Lord, that I am God. Our confession of his faithfulness is heaven's chosen agency for revealing Christ to the world. We are to acknowledge his grace as made known through the holy men of old. But that which will be made effectual is the testimony of our own experience. We are witnesses for God as we reveal in ourselves the working of a power that is divine. Every individual has a life distinct from all others and on experience and an experience different essentially from others. God desires that our praise shall ascend to him, mocked by our own individuality. These precious acknowledgments to the praise and the glory of his grace when supported by a Christ-like life, have an irresistible power that works for the salvation of souls. Number three, it is for our own benefit to keep every gift of God fresh in our memory. Thus, faith is strengthened to claim and to receive more and more. There is greater encouragement for us and the least blessing we ourselves receive from God, then all the accounts we can read of the faith and experiences of others. The soul that responds to the grace of God shall be like a watered garden. His health shall spring forth speedily. His light shall raise in obscurity and the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon him. Let us then remember the loving kindness of the Lord and the multitude of his tender mercies, like the people of Israel, let us set up stones of witness and inscribe upon them the precious story of what God has wrought for us. And as we review his dealings with us in our pil pilgrimage, let us out of hearts melted with gratitude declare, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Psalms 116, 12 through 14. I became excited that I could see his plan and be a part of his work. In 2012, I called the neurologist asking for an updated MRI. I was told, no more MRI, just go and have the surgery to remove the tumor. End of discussion. Well, I wanted to know what God was doing in that year. I asked a few doctors and they all had about the same answer. I was very frustrated at first. Then I put the updated MRI in God's hands. Brian's divine meeting. One day, Brian went into town and he saw a nicely dressed man standing by his car with a flat tire. He stopped to help him. The guy said he called for help and was waiting a long time. Brian said, no problem. And he changed his tire and he was ready to go. The man asked him, what does he owe? Brian told him, your money's not good with me. He wanted to do something for Brian. And as they were talking, Brian found out that he was an ear, nose and throat doctor. Brian and he talked about my situation and the fact that no one would authorize another MRI update for me. He right away told Brian he would authorize it. Dr. A gave Brian his number and told him to bring me to an appointment where he would be able to authorize the MRI. 
On June 30th, 2014 at 1 p.m., we had an appointment with the doctor in Colorado. The doctor came in, greeted us, and then he asked a few questions before the exam. Brian told him about me playing tennis on the Wii sport and hitting all the balls and moving all over the place. I told him I didn't have a lot of symptoms unless I did too much. My right side headaches or soreness to touch, dizziness and vision problems. Then he went and he looked at my MRI from 2011. Dr. A said, if he had saw the MRI before he saw me, he would have looked for a cripple or a paralyzed person in a wheelchair. He said, I shouldn't be able to do all that I do, walking, talking, playing tennis, driving, etc. We praise God in Dr. A's presence. It's another way God is showing us his power. The MRI showed how bad the tumor were three years before this appointment, how powerful my God is. It all depends on God, and that's all. Dr. A called a specialist that he wanted me to go to see. The, the same specialist was referred to me to have the tumor cysts removed surgically three years before. Seeing the size of the tumor, Dr. A said he would have sent me immediately to the specialist for surgery also. The only difference now is he wants the specialist to see me as a case study because my MRI and what I could do didn't match. Wow, praise God. He also said that the cyst was helping like a water balloon. It's not as hard as the tumor would be pressing on my nerves in my head. Thank you, God. June 29, 2015. We had the MRI appointment at 1030 and the doctor's appointment at three. I prayed again that the tumor would be gone. The answer was no. Proof of the miracle God is working in my life with no symptoms. The doctor told me the tumor had moved everything on my right side over and the left side was still normal. He said it wasn't supposed to be this way. He confirmed I wasn't having any major pains in my head and I was still doing everything I was doing before, still working, driving, taking care of home and family. He was concerned if I was having difficulties with my breathing, no problems. He still wanted me to go see the specialist for a case study. We gave Dr. A the eight doctors magazine. And he said to me, after looking at the magazine, it's working. Praise God. He was showing Dr. A his power and the doctor was acknowledging it. He authorized this MRI when others just wanted me to go for surgery. Dr. A said, no need of surgery, but go see the specialist. And then he said again, no surgery. July 15th, 2015. We had a 10 o'clock appointment with the neurologist, the specialist. He didn't want to hear anything about God. Brian started to tell him about the power of God in this tumor situation. He started talking about something else real fast, cutting Brian off. And he told us the tumor has grown. As he did certain tests, he tried not to show any enthusiasm, but as he tested, he remarked to his assistant a few times, did you see how fast her brain adjusted then reacted to these changes? He also repeated, did you see that? The specialist was calmly amazed at the reaction to all his tests. When I got to the balance test with my arms closed, my eyes, I mean, my eyes closed, my arms crossed and standing on a pad that was not stable. This was the only test that I lost my balance. God showed his power again and is still showing it. Praise him. The specialist asked if he could share my 2011 and 15 MRI's results with his colleagues 
so he could know what to tell me, which showed us again that God is powerfully working in my life and health. God showed me that year, 2015, that without his miraculous help, I should be paralyzed or worse. God is showing us we can trust him in all things. Tomer, the name I called the Tomer, is in God's hand as it has been for 36 years. He knows all things and I'll go on with life knowing the miracle he's working in me. His timing is perfect. I'll wait on him, on God, as I prayerfully do what he shows me to, has shown me to do, no matter what the outcome. I thank him and praise him. He is determined with heaven will be my home. I desire to cooperate with him and continue to learn to lean. I agree with Isaiah 25, one, which says, O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsel of old are faithful, faithfulness and truth. I, th I thank God for speaking to me through his word and spirit of prophecy. I am praising, I am blessed. Exodus 34, six says, and the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long suffering and abundance and goodness and truth.
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your gift of love to us. Thank you for the miracle you're doing in my life and for the extra time you've given me. Please help me use this time wisely and for you. In Jesus' name, amen.